And immediately after they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and his mother-in-law who was sick in the bed with a fever. And they told Jesus and Jesus went and grabbed hold of her and healed her. And she got up and did what a woman's supposed to do. (laughs) Well, that's what it says, right? I didn't make that up. That's what it says, that she got up and started to serve them because that's her role. That was her job. That was her vocation. I'm not saying that that's what women are supposed to do. Get, hear me on this. That's what Simon's mother-in-law's vocation was at that point in time with Jesus. See, she was sick. And she was unable to be who God had called her to be. She was unable to be a part of that community. Because when you were sick, you were unproductive. You were a burden to your family. You were ostracized. That's why lepers were outside the community because no one wanted to catch leprosy. And if you touched a leper, you could catch leprosy, right? So they ostracized those who were diseased. They ostracized those who were sick because they were more of a burden on their family than anything else, right? And that's what this passage is about, right? Jesus coming to heal, right? So my question to you today then is, What is healing? This this is the point where you answer the question. (laughs) Overcoming pain. That's a good one. What else is healing? Finding joy. Ooh. We can unpack that in a little bit more. What's another definition of what is healing? Caring and kind words. Letting the, oh, who said that? Nice. Getting better. Are all healings the same, though? I mean, we could talk here different types of healing, right? There's physical healing, where we feel better. There's mental healing, where we find joy. There's spiritual healing where we let it go, right? There's not, all healing is not the same. And healing in God's eyes maybe isn't the same as healing is in our eyes, right? Because see, here's the thing. The word heal doesn't even appear in our gospel passage this morning. But I guarantee you that 95% of us, as soon as I read that passage, went directly to the fact that Jesus healed Simon's mother-in-law, that Jesus then healed many and, and, and sent out the demons. And then he went on to other places in the world to heal them as well. But the word heal, as in physical healing, getting better, letting go of everything, reducing our pain, doesn't even appear in our gospel passage this morning. Because that's not what this passage is about. It's about why Jesus came. And why did Jesus come? Did Jesus come to heal us and to make us whole? Well, yes, kind of, as a secondary thing, really. See, the word there in the, in the Greek, where we take heal, or what it says cure, actually. It says, if you read the passage, it says, Jesus came and he cured her. And he cured many. The word cure is the word, is where we get the word therapy. How many of you have ever been to therapy? And notice I didn't ask physical or mental. I just said, how many of you have ever been to therapy? Right? When you left therapy, were you healed? More than likely not. Right? Right? There was still some work to be done. In physical therapy, there's probably still some exercises for you to do. Or in mental therapy, there's still some exercises for you to do once you exit that therapy, right? It's not an ending process. You are not healed. You're still working through that therapy. You're still working through that becoming whole. See, it's not about Jesus healing us the way that we want to be healed. I'm not saying that it's not going to happen if you pray to God to heal you of something, because it has happened, right? We all know people 
who have been healed miraculously from physical ailments that they've had, right? Cancer has disappeared or something else has happened. You know, I remember a time that I went to the doctor because I was having chest pains. And I went and I had all those tests done and stress tests and all, you know what the doctor looked at me and said? Everything's fine. I said, okay, doc, why am I having pain in my chest then? <laughs> right? There was a physical thing going on, but there was no healing that had to happen because everything was fine. You see, this passage is not about healing. It's about what Jesus came to do and what he sent each and every one of us to. Because we look at this and we want to be healed from that thing that's holding us back. We want to be healed from that disease that's keeping us down. We want to be healed from that loss that we've had. Or healed from that thing that other people have said about us that's holding us back. But I tell you, it's not being healed from anything. Jesus sets us free and is making us whole for the spreading of the gospel. Because this passage, not about healing, is about what Jesus came to do. And what did Jesus come to do, right? He healed my, Simon's mother-in-law, and then they brought all the people to him, and he healed all of them. And then night came, and in the morning, what did he do? He snuck away, he went out to a quiet place, and he prayed. And when he was praying, Simon Peter came and found him, and he said, Lord, everybody's looking for you because they want you to keep doing what you were doing. It's so great. They're talking about it. And everything is wonderful, and everything is beautiful. And you can just heal some more people, and everything's just gonna, we're just going to keep rolling in this greatness. And everybody's going to love us. And Jesus said, all right, let's go. Enough of this, what happened here. It's time for us to go someplace else because I have to tell them the good news. Jesus came to tell that each and every one of us could have a wholeness and a life with God. Not to stay where we're at and everything that's happened wonderfully, but to move forward out into the world to make sure that everybody hears the message that God came so that each and every one of us could have a greater life than we have right now. That each and every one of us could have something that's better than what we have right now. Jesus came not to heal us from something. Jesus came to make us whole so that we can go out into the world to do His will. He freed us for the slavery of the gospel. He freed us so that we might serve Him and go out into the world and tell everybody about the great things that have happened for us and the great things that could be for them. Not a physical wholeness or a mental wholeness or a spiritual wholeness. It's about us living out a life that God has called us to together as a body of Christ. I've recently heard this wonderful song. It's not really a new song, but it's, it's a newer song by a band called Casting Crowns. Anybody ever heard of them? Do you know that there are worship bands for our congregation? I preached Thursday night to the gatheredness of the Shano Conference pastors and leaders, and I said, how great would it be for you as a pastor to have Casting Crowns as your worship band? If that's what you're into, it'd be great. So, but Cassie Crown says this song is called Broken Together. How many of you have heard it? If you haven't heard it, I suggest you go out and look it up and find it. It's a song that talks about how, how we are all broken. And it's not that we are supposed to be made whole, but the fact in the body of Christ is if we can live together and we can be broken together, then we're going to go out and do great things for God. See, it's not about us being made whole. One of the lines in the songs talks about that exactly. It says we're not supposed to be made whole, but the fact that we can live together in the body and be broken together, that's what sends us out into the world, and that's what allows us to do what God has called us to do. You see, it's not about us being the whole that we think we need to be. It's about us understanding the blessings and the wonderfulness that God has given to us, where we're at right now, and living through that darkness and living through that pain together. Not alone, but together. And going forth into the world. Because that's where he's called us to go. Just as he said, let's go on to the rest of the country and the rest of the city so that I might tell them the good news. And in that, people will be healed. But it's the fact that we are sent out and to go that will bring them that good news that will allow them to have that wholeness of life. So be united together in your brokenness, knowing that all of us are broken. All of us are broken. And we need each other. But God has knit us together into His body and now asks us to go forward into the world to tell everyone of the great news 
of the wonderful life that they can have in Him. So go and tell everyone you meet of the wonderful life that God can give to them.